Welcome, welcome to the Unforgotten channel. As you can see by the title, I have two abduction cases that literally initially made me cry. Although there are not many leads on either of these cases, they really spoke to my heart, so I decided to speak about them. So let's get into it. Nefertiri Trader was born on February 21st, 1981 in Delaware to Denise Trader. She is a mother of three children and worked as a housekeeping staff at a local hospital. On Sunday, June 30th, 2014, Nefertiri was last seen by a neighbor in the Saddlebrook community at around 4 a.m. The neighbor claims to have witnessed Nefertiri being forced off her front porch by a man and into her car. The man was wearing tan shorts and a dark fitted sweatshirt. He drove off with Nephi's car with her in the back seat. Nefertiri was seen on camera at a local 7-Eleven at around 4.20 a.m. buying a loaf of bread, two cups of coffee, and a pack of cigarettes. The 7-Eleven is really close to her home. It is about a 10-minute walk and a one-minute drive to get there. It is not known if she traveled to the 7-Eleven by foot or by car. She was taken shortly after arriving home from the 7-Eleven. After a few unanswered phone calls, Denise, who is Nefertiri's mother, sent Nefertiri's cousin to the house to check on things. When arriving to the home, Nefertiri's cousin noticed a loaf of bread in the front yard that was stepped on a cup of coffee, a box of cigarettes, and an unopened condom. Nefertiri's flip-flops were next to the front door. The house was vacant, so she was reported missing shortly after. All items but the condom was purchased at the 7-Eleven prior to her disappearance. The second coffee that was purchased by Nefertiri was later confirmed to be for her daughter, it is stated that the neighbor who witnessed the abduction reported the incident 12 hours after seeing what had happened. The neighbor simply thought Nefertiri was ill and was being forced to go to the hospital. She was, at that time, on medical leave, so I'm not sure if he was aware of that or not. Nefertiri shared her home with her kids and her cousin. Her son and her daughter were home during the abduction. Her son had heard a commotion but when he walked downstairs, he didn't find anything out of the ordinary. It has been six years and Nefertiri nor her car has been found. Nefertiri's mother still remains hopeful in bringing her baby home. And since they shared the same birthday, she celebrates each year by having a vigil for her daughter. I pray for Nefertiri's mother and the rest of her family, and I hope they gain the answers and justice they need. Nefertiri will always be unforgotten. Joanna Wright was a 33-year-old hairstylist and a positive influence in the local LGBTQ community when she disappeared. She lived at Marquette Park in Chicago, Illinois, located in the Chicago Lawn neighborhood. She was described as a popular, stylish, well-liked person in her neighborhood, which leaves family confused. On the afternoon of Sunday, December 18, 2016, Joanna was taking a walk into the neighborhood. Joanna was last seen being forced into a vehicle by three to four unknown men. During the abduction, Joanna was seen screaming and fighting the men off of her until they were able to gain the upper hand. Joanna has not been seen or heard from again. The witness called the police right after. What makes this case even crazier? To me, five months earlier, in Sean Ward, who was an associate of Joanna, and also a resident of Marquette Park, was tragically met with foul play. He was 26 at the time. Shantae Bohannon, who was his girlfriend, and a few others witnessed the shooting but did not see the shooter's face. Just 11 days later, Shantae vanished. She was last seen at a repast for her deceased boyfriend. Her parents reported her missing when she failed to return home. A few days later, a tip was sent to the police that there was a body in a garage near the location Shantae was last seen. The body was identified as Shantae's. Cause of death, unknown. Shantae was only 20. Only a year after Joanna's disappearance, 26-year-old Marlo Gully was reported missing. He was an associate of Joanna as well. 
The last time he was heard from was on October 9th by his girlfriend. During the time of his disappearance, his girlfriend was pregnant, and he had already had a son, but he was very excited for his new child. After not being able to reach Marlo, his girlfriend called his mother worried. He was reported missing by his mother after a few days of not hearing from him. All of these individuals were associates, and all of these incidents happened in close proximity to each other. They still remain unsolved today. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, because if you're not subscribed and you leave this video, you may never see a video from me ever again.